Escherichia coli, most commonly known as E. coli, is one of the most common causes of intestinal infection. Taxonomy. Its domain is bacteria. It belongs to the phylum Proteobacteria. Its class is Gamma Proteobacteria. The order of E. coli is Enterobacterials. It belongs to the family Enterobacteriaceae. This family lives in the intestinal tract. The genus is Escherichia and the species is Escherichia coli. This is where E. coli name comes from. The genetics of E. coli. E. coli is a gram-negative bacteria, meaning that its gram staining is going to be reddish. It has a rod shape and it is a facultative bacteria. This allows them to survive with or without oxygen. E. coli is also mesophilic, meaning that it survives best at temperatures of 37 degrees Celsius to 48.8 degrees Celsius. That is why E. coli survives at body temperature. Now let's talk about the components and structure of an E. coli bacteria. The genetic material of E. coli comes in form of circular DNA. E. coli also contains ribosomes, a cytosol, pili, the plasma membrane, the cell wall, and the outer membrane structure. E. coli also contains a flagella, most specifically a peritricious flagella. This flagella is projected to all directions. Because E. coli is gram-negative, it contains a periplasmic space between the plasma membrane and the cell wall. E. coli life cycle E. coli life cycle is an asexual process. E. coli is going to replicate itself into two daughter cells. This process lasts 20 minutes and it is called binary fission. The first step of binary fission is the replication of the DNA molecule. For the second step, the cytoplasmic membrane elongates and thus separates the DNA molecules. For the third step, the cross wall forms with the invagination of the membrane. For the fourth step, the cross wall forms completely and we can see clearly that there are two bacteria now. The end result are going to be two identical daughter cells of E. coli. Methodology of infection of E. coli For you to get infected with E. coli, you need to ingest the bacteria itself. This can happen because the bacteria can be found in the feces of several animals and even humans. If these feces get in contact with food that we consume and these are not properly pasteurized, we can become infected with the bacteria. The most common food sources of an E. coli infection are unpasteurized products and undercooked meat. As such, E. coli has a methodology of infection that is via water and foodborne. But what makes E. coli so important? Most E. coli strains are harmless, however, there are some strains that can become deadly to us. This is because of a characteristic these pathogenic strains contain. They produce a toxin called Shiga toxin. These strains are called STEC, meaning Shiga toxin producing E. coli. E. coli O157H7 is the most common strain to cause infections in humans, but to name a few more pathogenic strains, there is also O26, O45, O91, and O103. There are over 100 strains that produce this toxin, so let's go deeper and see how E. coli bacteria infects our gut. Imagine that an E. coli bacteria just entered your digestive system. The first thing it is going to do is to attach itself to the microvilli of the gut lumen. The first virulence factor this bacteria uses is the pili. The pili is going to attach to the microvilli. As we can see in the animation, the bacteria causes these microvilli to disappear or go shorter. This will allow the bacteria to get to the gut cells. Another virulence factor E. coli has is the type 3 secretion system, which is what we are watching right now. 
What this is going to do is to secrete a protein that will open the pathway for the E. coli receptor to enter the host cell. These red structures are the receptors entering the gut cell. Once inside, they are going to anchor themselves in the gut cell membrane. As we can see, the receptors are now attached to the cell. Now, this tube-like yellowish structure is the one that is going to get E. coli stuck to the gut lining. Another characteristic E. coli has is the highly resistance to many antibiotics. This is caused by the changes in the E. coli DNA. Imagine this blue ball is an antibiotic targeting the bacterial membrane. A normal bacteria would undergo lysis once the antibiotic attaches to it. In the case of an E. coli bacteria, the DNA is changed, thus making the cell membrane of the bacteria to resist the antibiotic. There are antibiotics that target the ribosomes instead, and E. coli can still be resistant to those. This can be achieved by the process of conjugation, in which a cell containing a resistance to antibiotics transfers the information to another bacteria cell. Another process is called transformation, in which the information for resistance can be found in the environment in which the bacteria is living, and as a result, the bacteria absorbs it. Now that we know how E. coli functions inside our bodies, how can we know we could be infected with E. coli? The symptoms are abdominal pain, diarrhea, some strains causes hemorrhagic colitis, nausea, and in some cases vomiting. In extreme cases, kidney failure can be developed. In the worst case scenario of an E. coli infection, you can develop hemolytic uremic syndrome, also called HUS. The treatment against E. coli varies, and the usage of antibiotics is not recommended for an E. coli infection due to their high resistance to them. Some antibiotics E. coli is resistant to are erotimicin, amoxicillin, and tetracycline. An effective treatment for symptom relief is IV fluids for dehydration and exhaustion. If you develop kidney failure, then a kidney dialysis will be performed. The best way to avoid an E. coli infection is through prevention methods. Like it is thoroughly cooking meat, avoid consuming unpasteurized products, washing your hands more often or before every meal, and if you go swimming to a natural environment like a lake and you don't know if E. coli could be in the water, avoid swallowing water or don't go swimming to these places. Now let's see some statistical data. As we can see in this graph showing the incidence of several enteric pathogens from 2000 to 2018, E. coli O157 H7 infections are very constant every year. But this is not the case for other STEC strains. The outbreak for these types of E. coli began in 2011 and has been increasing throughout the years. This graph shows data from the United States. Now let's see a global map. This map shows the major outbreaks of E. coli O157. 157. It is measuring children deaths caused by E. coli infections. Death lowers as the country has more developed clinical tools. The places with higher rates of death are those that do not have the infrastructure for treating HUS. For further information, we know that from 1998 to 2007, 69% of all E. coli outbreaks trace back to food contamination, 18% to water contamination, and 14% from person-to-person -person or animal contact. The Center of Disease Control and Prevention estimates about 265,000 infections happen a year, in which 95,400 are caused by E. coli O157. And that's all for E. coli. Thank you very much.